within the next five to seven years, there's going to be um, a lot of changes, rapid fire changes in the world. It's an abnormal part of human evolution. From what I understand, things were not supposed to be this way, but they became this way and the story goes back before time of time. I've created a four month course for my pay what you can roots to Samadhi community that I'll be running from August through November. We're going to be deep diving into the practical aspects of how to develop a deep, tangible spiritual connection. Check the description box to learn more. I am here today with El Serumaga. She is an author and she's had a near death experience during a coma where she saw another planet Jesus and the Akashic Records. And today we're going to talk about her near-death experience and what she brought back from that. Thank you so much for joining me, Elle. Thanks for having me on. Of course, it's my honor. So I would love to start by just having you share whatever you would like to share leading up to your near-death experience and then about the experience itself. Well, um, I... um you know, experienced my situation um, as a surprise, um, even more so than having an experience like this. I literally went from just feeling a little bit sick to not that great. A mistake happened. And then I just, you know, my organs, you know, started failing. I was induced in a coma. And, you know, from there on, things kind of took a turn for the worst. I became septic. And my CO2 level was over 200, which the max it's supposed to be and, and retain um, brain function is 35. And um, my lungs were com almost completely filled with CO2. Um, everything was crashing, basically. And um, I, you know, I never thought that I would have had an experience like this, but it has, you know, manifested different things in my life and deepened my understanding of um, God, the universe, the Akashic records, and some of the things that I um, experienced and saw because I was led by three guides, I learned in my NDE, but some of the things have come after over time that understanding has revealed itself more and more through meditation and just getting random. I like to call them uploads instead of downloads. So, you know, just, you know, things like that. Interesting. So would you like to share what happened in the experience or in your comas? Yes. You know, I didn't have a concept of time, so I don't know the sequence of different events. But I remember uh, going through different dimensions and experiencing different reality outcomes of this particular reality. There are a couple of things that happened. Um, I don't want to go into detail with them because I shared them on another um, podcast. And I, you know, I was kind of just shared vaguely because Sometimes people become very political about things, but I revealed a little bit more and, you know, there were, you know, a couple of people be made, you know, became political about it. So I won't go into those particular, you know, things that actually happened, but I will say that I experienced different outcomes of certain things happening here. I also connected to the Akashic Records, but I didn't know at the time that it was the Akashic Records. I didn't really have any context at all. All I knew was that my life was one way and then it just transitioned to another way and I didn't even know that I was dying. So what I, when I traveled and when you're traveling it, through different dimensions, different timelines, whatever, your mind, and when you're on the other um, side of things, your mind naturally expands. So you don't think that things are abnormal. You just 
kind of everything seems more objective. Uh, there's a, a period of time where I was placed in different things because my guides, instead of telling me in long words, this is why, you know, things are this way. This is why things are that way. They just kind of placed me in various different um, things in order to experience what that conscious thing felt like. For example, yeah, a lily. I was placed in a lily. And so I had lily feelings. And then I was placed, I kept on hearing merge with a tree. And I didn't really understand what it was and why I was supposed to merge with the tree. And things are still coming to me from that. But I experienced the feelings of a tree because I learned that all living things are conscious. I was placed in a fish and the, um, I experienced the feelings of a fish. So my guides, instead of saying, this is what this is like, and this is how they feel, et cetera, just place me there. And one of the, one of the guides looked like my daughter and um, my daughter, I believe, or the one that looked like my daughter was anchoring me to the other side to stay alive and motivating me to stay alive because my feelings became very objective. Mm -hmm. So although I love my daughter very much, I may have gone completely mm -hmm. because, but since I saw her constantly, it motivated me to stick around and just, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, go through the experiences I was experiencing with the expectation of fully being present after the experiences were over. One of the things that I learned and realized, the reason for being placed in different uh, conscious things is to learn about love. So I was told that I needed to learn love from different points of um, perspective, because when we're able to do that, then we're able to be objective in life and society. We're able to forgive a little bit better. We're able to experience life in a more full way. And it's actually one of the things, regardless of the reason that we're here in this lifetime, it's one of the things that when we do leave this earth is beneficial and we're supposed to learn before we leave this mm -hmm. earth. So when you, when I learned about your, your podcast and I saw the title <laughs> and then now I'm seeing your love in the back there, you know, it seems simple, but what I learned was, is that it is the fundamental um, it's not really a feeling, it's uh, an action and expression that we're supposed to live in, regardless of our frustrations, regardless of, you know, just our conflicts, everything. Because when we do that, we understand the reason why we were created um, and why we are expressions of love from God and or divine source. So, wow, amazing. So I have to ask, what did it feel like to be a tree? Because I have a really strong connection with trees, and I'm just curious. I'm not surprised that you're all about love and you have uh, a connection with trees. What I learned was that trees are very conscious. They're intelligent to the point where um, they're in more intelligent than we are. Mm -hmm. And they're in evolved beings, um, spiritually and physically. And that's why they don't need to have bodies that, you know, move around the way that we do. We don't, um, the bodies that, you know, have to go and eat, have to make sure we get exercise. They are still um, spiritual beings and conscious beings that can uh, receive all of their nourishment from the sun, from the air. They, they take care of us and they know that they take care of us. They're very forgiving. They're very objective. Um, if we were to evolve, they, we would probably have those same feelings because, you know, they look at us like 
we're the little brothers and sisters and they kind of, you know, forgive us for a lot of our stupidity, but they're very, um, they're very objective and they're very loving and wise. So that's what I experienced of being a tree was more of those kind of like, um, you know, it is what it is type of thing, type of feelings and very, um, I don't want to say apathetic, but more accepting and very, you know, um, understanding. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's just crazy to me because that's exactly how I've experienced them since I was a child. And to hear somebody confirm that is just very validating, I guess. Yeah. And um, I got that um, there were going to be experiments on the consciousness of trees and other plants. And they've seen our history for so long that they actually know the true history. And um, to me, it seems as though ex some experiments might be done to extract information and to understand, you know, certain things that we may have wrong or we may not understand. So um, I would not be surprised if that uh, starts happening um, because I believe that it's going to happen and it could already be in the process. Oh, so you mentioned history that we may have forgotten. And that's something I heard you talking about in another podcast interview that you did, that there's mm -hmm. history that we've forgotten. Could you share what you were shown about that? Yeah, that we have cycles of, um, of our culture and our existence. And some of those cycles overlap. And also there are uh life is kind of stacked like dimensions like stacked on top of each other um those are different dimensions those are all of the different timelines and outcomes of this expression in this dimension that we can experience and right well right now we're in a time where those are all over the place they're rapidly changing mm -hmm. we're going from timeline to timeline without even realizing it, um, you know, uh, different things like that. So um, we have uh, the ability to be in this dimension, but we have another expression of ourselves in other dimensions. So for example, um, let's just say you're deciding to go to school and you decide, well, I'm gonna go to school in the East Coast. But in your mind, you were the choices that you were thinking for yourself was to go to school in the East Coast or the West Coast. But you, in another dimension, went to school in the West Coast instead. The you in the West Coast is going to have a different experience and expression than the you in the East Coast. And, um, you you may feel um, reverberations of those particular decisions from the different dimensional um, uh, decisions that you've made. So you might feel an echo or a, you know, a deja vu or something seems a little like a glitchy matrix matrixy thing in this dimension because it, you're, you and the other one is expressing something. That's mind bending. And to think <laughs> about all the choices that you make, even in a day, does every single choice that you make split off? I don't know how much it, um, it splits off to, but I have a feeling it's infinite um, just because of the laws of physics and, you know, um, and nature, but it does split off. Okay. So you mentioned the Akashic records. Can you tell us about the Akashic records? So what I came to realize, what I was experiencing and why I didn't have any context is because before all of this happened to me, I always said to myself, you know, when I die, that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask God what's going on here. What's the real story? Things like that. You know, I'm one part realist, but one part idealist. 
but the realist part of me struggles with wanting um, proof or wanting, you know, to know the truth. The, um, the idealist part of me wants hope. So when I was going through my um, NDE, I asked, you know, show me what's really going on. Another one of the guides would take me and say, you know, here, you know, kind of similar to the merge with the tree, would just kind of place me in the situation. And I would experience what was going on, like corruption in the world. I would experience, for example, um, I saw some things going on in um, the sex trade because I asked what is going on here with, with children, you know, with the disappearance of women or whatever. And the guide would place me kind of like an observer, but also participant in the scene, not participating, meaning that I was participating in what was going on, but participating, meaning that I was in the scene like observing. And um, so I, I saw certain things in regards to that and that they're active. Um, I saw a building in um, uh, Asia where there were some things going on and it was an actual business, like a corporation. And then um, I was placed in, uh, in other uh, situations. I was placed in, um, uh, in front of this woman that was in Hollywood that made a lot of decisions about the careers of people, but there were a lot of, um, she was also an orchestrator of a lot of the things that were going on wrong in Hollywood. And that there was going, there was a big blow up. Now I'm saying what happened then, but these are Akashic future um, events. And um, anyhow, she was um, the orchestrator of a lot of bad things in Hollywood. And this was going to come out. There was going to be a big blow up in Hollywood. And, you know, certain things were going to unearth even more than what's been previously in the news. So... The Akashic records that I experienced was more like a hollow deck, which is the term from Star Trek, where you walk into the experience and you observe, you know, or, or some, you know, participate instead of what I previously thought of the Akashic records, which was like a big library where you read things. <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you. You asked God, or I don't, whatever word you would be comfortable using with that. God's fine. <laughs> okay. So you asked God, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. um, through being put in all these different scenarios, were you given any kind of an overriding answer as to the purpose of earth and what we're doing here? Yeah. Um, energy never dies. And we are energy. And our true form is light bodies and the one of the reasons why we need to learn the expression of love which is very hard in this world but we need to to learn it in every way possible is because love is kind of like the fuel for energy um, it actually creates um, physical changes within our expression within our dna within our bodies so it's important for us to learn um, the other thing is that, of course, as I said before, we're supposed to learn the expression of love. But the reason why we're here is because we chose to be here before we were born in our light body selves. We said, OK, my light body self needs to go through this particular lesson to evolve and become even more of a light body or whatever the, the situation is. And so it it'll be best for me, I take up the challenge of becoming, you know, coming into this particular world, this boot camp, so to speak, and uh, just participate in life and become refined through my experiences right now, so that when I leave this earth, I can elevate and add refinement to my soul. 
So that's the reason why we're here. Number one, we chose to be here. Number two, we put ourselves, we made the decision to put ourselves through this boot camp to learn and to refine our souls. Well, a question that comes up a lot from my viewers is that because a lot of near-death experiencers will be shown that we chose our lives for a specific purpose, mm-hmm. to grow and evolve as souls or to have certain experiences. And then people will come in my comment section and say that they have a pre-birth memory and remember being forced to come or remember not wanting to come. Were you shown any explanation as to why some people may feel that way? Yeah. How many times do we regret our decisions? <laughs> so right. That's essentially what's going on. But God is not a forceful God. God is not, you know, um, dominant. God is a uh, part um, masculine energy and part feminine energy and an energy that we will never, ever understand in the, on this particular earth. So um, God doesn't, you know, harshly force us to do anything. Sometimes we say we're going to do something and then we regret our decisions. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe that they're experiencing. Yeah, I agree. So in your near-death experience, I heard you talk about how you traveled to a different planet. Could you share about Mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Uh, One of the places which, if we're going chronologically, I would think that this was towards the end just because of what happened. Um, I had been, you know, out of my body. I was steadily declining, like I said, and my organs were not functioning. I was on full life support. The doctors gave me less than 1% chance of living. And the decision was made to take me off of life support. Before, you know, I in my analytical brain, because I spent a long time trying to analyze this myself. To me, it felt like it was at the closer to the end. And based on some things that my family was saying, you know, that was going on at the time in the outside world, in this Mm -hmm. reality. I went to another, um, one of my guides just, I don't, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of like a push. And then all of a sudden you're there. So I was flying through space. I saw a nebula. And again, because you're in a different state of mind when you're dying, you don't think, oh, wow, this isn't abnormal. You know, some people when they see their grandparents, oh, you know, oh, it's my grandparents. They don't think, why am I seeing my grandparents? You know, they just kind of embrace the moment. So I did the same. I didn't have a body. I looked down and I didn't see anything. All I could see was my eyes and I had my normal conscious thoughts. So I traveled that way, um, not on a spaceship, um, but just my orb self to another planet. And when I got to this planet, I saw beings that had translucent skin and they were going about their daily lives. I saw some buildings and I was kind of, I tell people, I was kind of like a reverse ET where here we would see, you know, when people talk about seeing an ET in the bushes, observing them or whatever. So that was me in their world. I was doing that. And, but it was a, um, a species that seemed to know about humans because I did observe, you know, a couple looking at me, but they didn't seem phased by my, you know, ex- by my um, experience. There. And my guide was telling me there at that point, you know, yes, there are um, intelligent life and in other, you know, planets and universes, and they have experiences. Uh, some of them have experiences similar to ours as far as they have cultures and societies there you know, typically more um, advanced than us because they they have more understanding and have been around a long time, but was essentially kind of acknowledging for me another question that I wanted some, I mean, I've, I believed in, you know, ETs before, but, you know, you always like to get some confirmation. <laughs> so my guide was saying, yep, um, it's true, basically. So, yeah. 
Amazing. So you said if you had to put this in chronological order, even though there wasn't really a time sequence, this would have been towards the end. Is there anything that happened in between that we didn't get to that you would like to share? Well, when I, you know, a lot of NDEers um, talk about seeing a light, Mm -hmm. at least, you know, on, um, on TV. And before this, that was pretty much the only reference I had about NDEs. And even after my own experience, I purposely stayed away from watching other people's NDE stories until recently. I think I've probably watched maybe two and a half other NDE experiences. Mm -hmm. And it actually helped me because I didn't realize that some of the things I experienced were similar to other people. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I didn't was because I didn't want to see somebody else's experience and then kind of absorb that into my own. I wanted to be able to like communicate my own experience without all of the, <clears throat> you know, the metaphysical words and, mm-hmm. you know, without all of the things that everybody says and references. So I wanted to be able to just speak, you know, my, my truth. So um, at the end, there was a tunnel-like light, but the thing that I could not understand was one of my guides told me to stick out my left arm. I, I can even, I don't even know why I remember this stuff so clearly. I'm still trying to figure out why I remember everything so clearly, um, or most things I should say so clearly. Um, my guide said to stick out my left hand. My guide was over this way but a little higher and a silver sphere appear, appeared in my hand. And then um, around the silver sphere or above it was an image of Jesus in a light body farm, f- form. But you can see that it was Jesus. And I was also telepathically said, this is Jesus and his love, you know, everything's um, going to be okay. And in my mind, because I didn't even, it didn't, compute to me how abnormal this was in my mind I was more thinking oh you know that's that's wonderful you know it was (laughs) uh that's great (laughs) it wasn't like it didn't register that I was about to leave forever you know or at least Mm -hmm. that was where things were were leading and then Um, From that, a light panned around the room that I was in and made a a tunnel shape. And it was a very bright light. And I got the impression that I was going to go somewhere, but I was very still. It was very peaceful. I was very calm. I didn't think, oh, where's my daughter? You know, got to get her or anything like that. I just, I had Uh, thoughts and feelings not typical for me in a situation like that like completely oblivious but peaceful and then I heard that it wasn't my time and that in so many words that I was going back and then the light just kind of retracted back and that's all I remember at that time so when I went to speak to my family and they told me what was going on in this reality then it seemed to kind of match up. So that's when, how I, you know, knew that this was close to the end of, you know, my existence. So. Amazing. So is there anything else from your experience? Because I know you said that there's just so much that it's hard to Mm -hmm. narrow down what exactly to talk about. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to share? Well, uh, things that I've gotten since then, in my meditations was that um, everyone right now, regardless of whether they've had a near-death experience or not, needs to work on their health. Now, you know, this could be interpreted as you need to work on your health so that you can handle things and you can handle stress better and things like that, which is true because we're going into a time where there's gonna be rapid fire change But also one of the reasons that we need to is because our bodies are still connected to our light bodies, our souls. 
And in order for us to elevate spiritually and as human beings, we need to be careful of you know, what we do to our bodies and what we put in our bodies. Now, I'm not saying it's not going to be a struggle. Like I, I have a sweet tooth. I'm constantly having to fight that off. So it's an ongoing process, but at least we should be trying. And we sh- if, we are, if we're weak in one area to find something um, to combat that particular weakness so that it can help to refine the energy around our um our souls and our bodies um you know since we're predominantly water this is especially important because we're predominantly energy and energy um, flows in a certain way that will either enhance us or be our detriment depending on how we feed it so that's one of the things that i i got since then the other thing is that within the next five to um, to seven years, there's going to be um, a lot of changes, rapid fire changes in the world. And it's really important for us to mentally, um, spiritually develop a meditation regimen that's every single day, not just a couple of times a week, not just, you know, whatever, but to do that because that's going to help with all of these changes, not only to affect the outcome of those changes as we all collectively do that, but also it's going to help us to our mental health in general, to be in the frame of mind where, like I told you before we started, I had a frustrating week just because I had an NDE doesn't mean that my life is like floating on a cloud constantly and everything's all great, you know, all the time. But you know, I have more, you know, understanding and personal resources to be able to combat this 3D world, you know, that we're in. But we all can have the similar experience that I did without having an NDE if we put those things into practice. Thank you so much for sharing. I think that message is so important right now. And you mentioned that we're going to be going through some rapid fire changes over the next five to seven years. And um, politics aside, (laughs) are you able to share with us like where we're headed? Where is the end goal of this? Um, I can tell you I can tell you what the purpose is and the best potential end goal is that we're going to be elevating as a society a lot of our dogmas, our you know, going to be non-existent or less existent. And the, the, the goal is for us to be a more enlightened society, um, not a society that is structured around like matrixy type of living, you know, meaning you go to work, you, you know, you come home, you pay your bills and you do it all over again. It's, um, you know, we're supposed to be coming out. We're in a dystopian society right now. Mm-hmm. And we're moving towards going um, away from a dystopian society to a more enlightened society. But a lot of the things that we do will determine if we're successful at that or not. Right now, I believe that we are going to be successful um, based on certain awarenesses um, um, existing right now. But, you know, more people have to kind of you know, uh, do this self-work and, you know, experience these types of lessons. And I don't know if that's one of the reasons why more people are able to share of their near-death experiences. It could be a common of, combination of just like medicine is better or um, where more people are living or there's a purpose, uh, purposeful divine mission that more people can come back from near death and say, Hey, this stuff is real, get it together. You know, um, whatever the reason is, we're supposed to experience enlightenment. You said a couple of interesting things. You mentioned that we're living in a dystopian society and also that our lives of going to work and coming home to pay the bills just to do it all over again is like the matrix. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this? Is there some type of power like 
some people will say ETs or even just a human power that has us in kind of a trap down here in like an actual matrix? Or is this just part a normal part of human evolution that we're going through? It's an abnormal part of human evolution. Things were actually, from what I understand, things were not supposed to be this way. But um, they became this way, and the story goes back before time of time. There's an attempt to get us back on track and to push us towards an evolutionary, I mean, uh, another evolution, basically. Um, In my understanding of what I learned and what I saw, we were not created by ETs. They may have... um, participated in our evolution and development, whether that be through manipulation of, you know, physical things like DNA or through other ways, they may have participated in assisting us, you know, along the way, but they're not our gods. Um, What I got was that there's one God who is the God of all species, all universes. And to me, um, you know, That's what I understood um, because it's also, it's it's um, anti-science even to think that there's energy over here, energy over there, and they're not connected. There's only one source of energy, and that's what connects us all. We're connected to all of our, you know, um, all of the races, races and species. We're consciously connected to other divine things and like plants. We share, I think it's 84 to 88% of DNA with mushrooms. We um, share the same number of uh, amount of DNA, it may be like in the 70 range with trees. We share the same thing with these, um, I forgot the name of the worms, but they're like, uh, they're extremophiles that live in the bottom of the ocean near volcanoes. Our DNA, um, I believe, was like 80, 89% with those. So it doesn't mean necessarily that we evolved from them. It means that we came from the same source and there's one source and we're all branches of that source and that divine expressions of love, which again is why I believe that one of the reasons my guides just placed me in these things and said, you know, experience this love is because I'm connected to those things and we're all connected to those things. Amazing. Okay. One more question then based on what you were just explaining. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that we weren't, this was an abnormal part of our evolution and we weren't supposed to be in this place that we are now. So Mm -hmm. originally, what were we supposed to be doing and how did we get off track? We are the kids in school that are behind and have had to maybe repeat a few grades. That's the equivalent of us. Um, So it was there. The intention was for us to be far further along than we are. And there have been uh, cultures before us that got to a certain evolutionary place and then all of a sudden disappeared from that evolution. So this is a cycle that keeps happening in the event, I mean, um, with the goal or the intention of one day we're going to get it right. Hopefully that will be, you know, our culture, our current culture. Um, But in general, we were supposed to have already, you know, been in a place of higher enlightenment There are many stories as to what's told that why we got off track. I didn't go through the experience in my NDE of knowing what those all those particular details are. But the impression I got was, you know, it is so long, such a vast history, so timeless beyond even the beginning of the earth that at this point, it doesn't matter. (laughs) anymore it's just the the point the most important thing that matters is that we get things straight now and that we evolve so 
Elle, thank you so much for sharing about your near-death experience and the wisdom that you brought back from it. I'd like to give you a chance to share with the viewers where they can find you and anything you have going on that you'd like them to know about. Sure. Uh, you can email me um, if you have any um, comments or questions at less than and then the number one and then percent spelled out 1111 at gmail.com. And um, you can also reach me on my website at at you are the letter L 1111.com. Okay. I'll have those links in the description. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. I did too. Thank you for watching the Love Covered Life podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and comment with your thoughts and opinions and check the description box for the links to my free community where I share lots of resources, my pay what you can community where we do classes and challenges together, my TikTok, Instagram, my clips channel, and lovecoveredlife.com where I share my paintings. Thank you so much for your support.